getting ready for 2021. This year's been crazy and you can't be unprepared, right? Hail and welcome everybody. My name is Jesse and thank you for joining me on the final video of 2020. This year has been an incredible one in many aspects um, and has been one for the record books as they say. Had a lot of tremendous growth here on the channel. Um, put out a lot of really fun and interesting content. Had a lot of wonderful guests um, and people on this show to offer some insight to different things pertaining to Norse heathenry and Germanic paganism and mostly what people would call also true nowadays, although that term just kind of is an umbrella term that may or may not be used correctly in most cases. But um, one of the great guests that I've had, um, not, 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 not a guest, uh, so, so much as, as a, I don't know if you want to call him a sponsor, but a great supporter of the channel is Matthew Petrie at Odin's Beard Woodworking. I have Thor here beside me for today's video. Um, so big shout out to Matt Petrie at Odin's Beard Woodworking. Uh, big shout out to Eric Shervin at The Raven's Call, who has also been a guest here on the channel and collaborated with me a number of times and offered some really great insight on how he heathens and how his tribe heathens. And, and we were able to develop a really good friendship, I think, over the last year or so. Um, so a big shout out to Eric Shervin at The Raven's Call. Be sure to check his channel out. Uh, and then also a big shout out to uh, J.M. Olufsen. Um, there's going to be some information down in the description of this video. Uh, you may see some annotated cards up here uh, that link you to the video that I did with him. Um, but the shaman for the Urt Dipt Kindred, uh, based out of North Carolina. Tremendous, tremendous man. Uh, very knowledgeable and uh, really awesome guest here on the show. So thank you to everyone, those that I have mentioned that have helped make Midgard Musings grow this year, and to anybody else that I haven't mentioned, specifically you, the person watching and listening to this video today. You know, you are part of the reason, a big part of the reason of why I still do what I do here on Midgard Musings. You know, if it wasn't for your support, through your views, comments, likes, subscriptions, all of that, uh, then this channel wouldn't be where it is today for sure wouldn't have the kind of reach that it has, wouldn't have the kind of, you know, uh, interaction and all that kind of stuff. So the biggest shout out, I think, goes out to you. So thank you so much for supporting Midgard Musings in 2020, regardless of the craziness that has happened, regardless of the amount of chaos and things that, have, that has gone on uh, this year, you are still here. If you're watching this video now, then you are still here. So thank you all every one of you all across Midgard that has helped make this channel what it is today. I look forward to seeing the channel grow more and to continue in my own journey uh, in heathenry and have you here alongside me as we go through this in this sort of way. So I do wanna thank each and every one of you. I want to encourage to check out the description area before we go into the topic of today's video and check out everything that I've mentioned uh, from Odin's Beard Woodworking to Eric's channel to the Ur Dipped Kindred and the associate, uh, associated projects and things uh, that James Olufsen has. Um, really awesome stuff I want you to all check out. Um, and be sure to share these videos, you know, keep those likes and subscriptions coming. The more we get, the more I'm able to give. Um, and, and that's really what this channel is about, is to in some sort of way give back to, to, to you know, people and folks that have helped do so much for me and my so um, enough of that intro I hope you guys are doing well and staying healthy and strong and here we go We're getting into the last and final hours of 2020 and we're all here together so grab your horns grab your axes grab your swords grab your spears grab your loved ones and let's make 2021 the best year yet hail and enjoy today's video all right folks here we are hope you enjoyed that intro like I said um, and thank you again just as a reiteration you're gonna hear me say this a lot 
This is the last video of 2020. You know, 3,500 plus subscribers. Um, I think this time last year I was, you know, trying to gun for a little over 2,000 or 2,500 or something. Great, great growth here on the channel over the last year, um, despite everything, you know, despite all the challenges. So, hail to you all. Thank you again. Today's video is actually a subscriber request. Um, and, uh, or, or somebody that commented, hopefully you subscribe. But this is a uh, response to one of my last videos um, in the comment section. Uh, the, the video that, that I'm referring to is the one where I talked about the idea or concept of punishment in heathenry. It was uh, going to be annotated up here for you in case you want to go back and reference that. Um, but uh, today's video is, like I said, a, a response to Dingo Lightfoot. And Dingo's question um, in the form of a comment was, could you talk about anarchy in heathen societies or the absence of civilized community and how that applies to self-reliance. You know, so I wanted to, um, I thought that was a neat question, you know, I thought that was an interesting question to uh, talk about something that, relatively speaking, is a pretty modern uh, idea. And it's, you know, this channel is not really something that I've ever used to uh, and will ever use, and I won't ever use this channel for you know political agendas or, or political views. I don't get into that sort of thing. But you know the question about anarchy or an absence of civilized society. You know, so I guess the interesting thing I thought about that was um, how that correlates to self-reliance, and I think it, it brings up some interesting points. Now, of course. This whole concept of, of anarchy as, as a political movement, I think, is, is very, very modern in comparison to heathenry, of course. You know, um, I want to say that it didn't even initially become part of our vocabulary until around the 1500s or 1530s or something like that. And the, uh, but the idea of, of anarchy, you know, the, um, the, the, the defiance of, of, of a uh, the defiance of the state, you know, government, religion, those things that have a, an, over, an overruling sort of control over a people. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about that because I think it's important to understand its application and it's, and it's over-romanticized, I believe, anarchy is. I think the concept is you know, when you think about it or when you look at it on paper, it's like, that kind of makes sense. But practically speaking, it doesn't work, and here's why. Um, or the way I see it, right? The reason why I see it. When you talk about anarchy and you talk about the fact that it's, it's basically just the people ruling themselves and, and they're not having any sort of, you know, governing body to tell them what to do or, or how to do it or whatever, um, you run the risk of things just having no sense of order. Now, I'm not saying that people can't rule themselves and that, you know, the people don't uh, have the ability to not be governed um, or society does not have the ability to run itself. Um, what I'm saying is that when those hierarchical structure is, when, that, when those sort of hierarchy structures are, are in place, society just tends to function better. Um, but there's a fine line, you know what I mean? Um, when you've got, you know, the government or, or uh, whatever just in your business all the time you know that that gets I don't really like that um, but in terms of like having no structure at all and, and, and having it just where everybody rules themselves and being self-reliant to the exclusion of having some sort of uh, rulers or, or leaders or things like that I don't feel like that falls into the overall worldview of, of, of arch heathenry you heard me mention arch heathenry probably plenty of times on the channel. If this is your first time, what I'm talking about is I'm referring to the, the, the societal view uh, or the world view of the people of Northern Europe pre-Christian times, okay? So we're talking about things that were deemed as, as, a, as how society functioned well before the Viking Age, okay? Um, up to and before the Viking Age. A little bit during the Viking Age, but at that point, you know, there was a lot of the, the, the globalized Christian world view of things being inserted into 
Scandinavia and it became a part of the norm. So talking about, when I say arch heathen times, I'm talking about times that predate the Viking Age. So <clears throat> at those times, you had rulers, you had kings, you had, or you had you know, chieftains, you had jarls, you had um, people that were set up that led their people, that led their respective tribes. And there was the, the, the role of the leader, the role of that, that ultimate authority figure, whether it be the chieftain or the, the jarl or whoever, um, that, that figure was, was in place as a sort of uh, protector or, or caretaker of the overall luck of that group, of that tribe, of, of society. Because without that ruler, without that lead role, um, there, you would run the risk of, of just, you know, like I said, people just doing whatever. There, there was no uh, anchor point. There was no direction that people could necessarily follow or, or, or lean on when things got tough or when things needed to be dealt with or whatever. So in our teeth and times, when, when we see you know, how society worked and how society functioned, it was not without any sort of ultimate authority or leader authority. It wasn't globalized and it wasn't as, as on a larger scale as it is now and today. In modern times when you got, you know, like, you know, local governments, county, state governments, federal governments, you know, world leaders, that sort of thing. It's a much bigger place now here in 2020 going into 2021 than it was, you know, in the 7th and 8th century um, Scandinavia or before. Um, and not just Scandinavia, but we're, you know, we're talking about Germanic heathenry, and this channel is focused on that sort of thing, so that's why its um, focus is, is on that. Um, but, uh, you know, so with that being said, the leaders in, in place also uh, understood and, and recognized and, and knew the importance of people doing things that kept the tribe, kept the society operating smoothly, right? So this whole thing about um, the absence of a civilized society um, as, as something that uh, you know, focuses on or, or can help in the self-reliance thing, I'm gonna go out on a limb and suggest that this question is coming from an angle or coming from a point that, um, you know, when you, cause you mentioned self-reliance specifically, uh, that, that is one of those buzzwords to me uh, of the nine noble virtues and I've done a video on this channel on my stance towards the nine noble virtues and I've done a recent video um, on my overall view of codifying heathenry so this whole self-reliance thing it's yet yeah, you ha people did things to provide for themselves provide for their families their clans their hearts their homes and they also did things and and by doing that right by doing that that individual care that that smaller collective care you know, caretaking of things, that was part of caretaking and, and, and being a, a benefit to the community. Your worth as an individual was determined by how well you could do things, right? How well did you provide for your home? If you could provide well for your family in, in lean times and you were, you know, a, a bountiful, you know, whatever, a farmer or, or a shepherd, you raised livestock, whatever you did at the time, that took care of and provided for your own, your worth in the tribe was was determined by your peers and by the other people in that society as being much better because, hey, this guy's bringing food to the table, he's bringing, you know, shelter, warmth, all these things that they had to do during those times. So this whole self-reliance thing has become a very modern, you know, push, right? Like, well, we should be able to take care of ourselves and we don't need the government and we don't, you know, need the man telling us what to do. This is true, right? That, that, that part of things doesn't need to be there. But the, 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 authority, the authority role, the, the leader role, um, has to exist in order for society, society to function properly, you know? And we, we see this even in our mythology, you know? There's a varying classes of people. Uh, Rikstula, one of the poems in the Poetic Edda, references um, the sort of formation of the three classes of mankind. You have, you know, the nobility. Um, you have the, uh, you know, the thralls, and then you, you know, you have the middle class. You have those that are, you know, just 
average the average Joe kind of person, you know, that that the everyman uh, sort of sort of folks. And then you have like the, the, those thrall types, the, the the people who are not as well to do, maybe the slave types, whatever. Um, but the three different societies, or classes of society, I should say, um, is displayed in the mythology. You also see um, in the varying tribes of the gods, the Aesir and the Vanir, you know, um, some of the gods are more well known. They have greater things to offer to the tribe uh, than some of the lesser gods who may not have as much, you know, screen time or whatever you want to call it. They're not talked about as much in the lore and they're not mentioned as much in the stories. Um, but, you know, there's a structure. You know, you can tell that there's a structure there. And I think that it's important to reflect on that as well because the people of uh, pre-Christian Scandinavia and then those arch heathens at the time, um, the, the, the mythology and the lore that comes from those areas, I think, is a reflection on how society works and how society functions. They, they, they saw their sacred figures as, you know, uh, examples to, to live by uh, and examples to try and emulate, you know, so there, there's order, there's um, structure, there's leaders, there's uh, the ultimate leader, there's the people who kind of are the leaders, you know, second lieutenants or, or, or right hands or that sort of thing, and you know, it goes down, there, there's, a, there's a definite structure and order. So, you know, to say that this, uh, you know, anarchy and heathenry or, or, or there's, you know, everybody's just doing their own thing because we've got to be self-reliant. Learning things that are going to benefit you and yours should be something on the forefront of all of our minds, regardless of what your political views are, regardless of, of even your religious views. Like, I could, t I, could, I could go on and say a lot of things and, ref and, and find references to my religious path in Norse heathenry, and you could hear things um, about what I'm saying and find references in your own religious path, even if this is a, something that's not your cup of tea. If, if Norse heathenry or, you know, any sort of Germanic paganism isn't your direction that you're heading in, it's, it still, you know, has some things that will fit in almost any religious practice or any walk of life, really. It's, you know, practical things, morality, things that just help a society function. And part of what helps society function is having structure and having order, right? If there's no order, then there's chaos. And then when, when there's chaos, what happens? Things just fall apart. Now, there's the necessary chaos. There's things that, that are about life that, you know, always a check and balance, you know? Um, we see this in our mythology again with Yggdrasil, the world tree that connects all of the nine realms and what is constantly trying to destroy and gnaw away at the health and wealth and well-being of Yggdrasil is Nidog, right? That I believe is, is entropy, that, that, that just constant trying to, to, to take away or tear away at um, what, is, what is healthy and what is good and what is beneficial. You know, and there's, there's things that happen that, that are constantly in this flux, you know, checks and balances sort of thing. Um, so anyway, to answer the question, hopefully, this is a bit of a drawn out answer, but hopefully it's, it's brought some light to the question, and I, and I think it's a great one. Um, you know, anarchy or anarchist type mentality doesn't really fall into a heathen worldview to me. Um, the whole self-reliance thing, um, you can do that and, and be that just fine and still have structure and have an order to uh, the way things are going. It's how tribe is, is, is formulated, it's how tribe is built. There, there's, a, there's a structure, there's, you know, hierarchies, there's, there's all of that. Um, I think what he's talking about in his comment with, you know, uh, is probably referencing more of, you know, what's in modern times, you know, and, uh, having the government do this for, for you and do that for you. I am not the type to accept handouts. I believe we should all work hard for what we get. I also feel that there are things set in place now in modern times that are de there and built and designed to help out the less fortunate. Okay, it's what helps. It's what's helped make the, our society currently function on the level that it does. So, 
and it's, I'm sure it's, it's different in every different parts of the world. It's, you know, I'm referencing things and knowing about things that are happening in my part of the world, in the United States. Different things across the world are different. So there has to be structure. There has to be order. Without order, it's utter destruction. There, there, you know, chaos will reign and a society will crumble and fall. And then next thing you know, people are destroying each other and it's, 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 it's bad news. So I hope that answered your question. I'm anxious to hear what all of you have to say about it and what you all think about it. So down in the comments section, don't forget, leave your comment. You know, uh, let me know what you guys think. See if I'm on the mark. And if I'm not, let me know. Um, share your own thoughts. It's what helps make this channel continue to grow. As I've always mentioned, you are the reason why I do what I do here and for us all to hopefully learn together. So. I want to just, again, thank you all for an incredible 2020, as rough as it's been and as, and as harsh as it's been and as so much agony and, and, and uh, you know, pain that a lot of us have felt uh, in varying ways uh, throughout this year. Um, you're watching this and you're here. You made it, you know. So I hope you're having a safe and enjoyable New Year's Eve going into 2021. And I hope that your hearth fires continue to burn bright and that there is good luck for you and yours in the coming new year. So here's to all of you. I thank you once again. Hail, and I will see you in the next video.